Hello everybody. Let's wait a few 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 seconds before to, to start this uh, webinar. Welcome to everybody. Before to start the presentation of this uh, webinar, let's uh, present myself. I am Maxence. I'm working for for Venki and for Flow. And I am a, a consultant and I'm working also for the, the support of uh, the tool. Today, the, this webinar means to present a new feature uh, which is uh, available on Airflow, which is the analytics report. But during the meeting, we will not talk about the, um, the other features available on Airflow, like, for example, the process uh, modelization, the sharing of documentation, or the process executions. If you want more information uh, about these other features and the different innovation that we do in addition of the, the one I will present today, don't hesitate to contact our team, our sales team, and in particular Rodrigo Gérez, uh, that I'm sure you have uh, the email, and if you don't have, you can contact me and can give you this contact. So, first of all, I will share my screen because the goal of uh, today will be for me to present this new feature in an environment of test, just to show you uh, some example. So, I guess now you, you can uh, see my screen. So, don't hesitate uh, to write me a message in the right part. I think at the end of the, this presentation, I will be able to see them. And um, if you have questions, you can write there, and I will take time at the end of this presentation to reply your different questions. So thank you for your, your reply. So now you can see my, uh, my screen and my environment of uh, presentation of today. So as I said before, the goal is to present this new feature which is the report, uh, analytics report that Airflow can provide you. So during this presentation, first of all, I will explain uh, the goal uh, of uh, this new feature, why we did this new feature. After I will explain and present the different categories that exist for our analytics. After I will show the structure of a classical report in Airflow. And after I will show you how you can give the rights to your different user to access this environment, to access the different report. And to finish, I will present the goal and objective of each report that we can propose you. But to start, let's speak about the beginning. Why we create analytics directly on Airflow. In fact, as you know, you can use Airflow to automatize your process. That means that you will use this tool to execute and run process instances. Thanks to this, you will be able to create a database of instance of your processes. And with this database, the goal is to analyze this data. And until now, you have different way to do this in Airflow. First of all, you can reach your workspace and the task list, and see the different information available in your environment. So for this, you can do a filter by responsible of a process, for example. You can even add information to, uh, to add uh, more information about your process and export this data in Excel. But if you do like this, you can already see a limit. First of all, you will never be able to put all the information possible of your process. And moreover, you will still be in the level of the work item and on the level of the talk. This is an important point that I will explain later during this presentation, the notion of work item and talk. So you have this task list. You have also, as you know, the possibility to create different custom pages inside of your environment and insert dashboards that we call widgets. Until now, the widgets that you can create are not done to analyze data. Indeed, 
these dashboards are done to take decision, managerial tool, not an analyze tool. So normally you use this for taking decision for your day-to-day -day, uh, work in the process executions and for manage people inside of your teams. And for this reason, uh, as you know, if you already use this kind of dashboard, we limit the display of the data on the different dashboard for a quantity. And moreover, the export of this kind of data is limited to 1,000 lines. So it shows that this kind of tool is to be used for taking decision in your day-to-day -day, uh, use of the tool and not to analyze deep data of one year, two years, for example, of process instances. You have, until now, a last thing and a feature that you can use to analyze your data. This one is the fact that Airflow gives you the opportunity and the right to export the database related to this environment. If you activate this feature in your environment, you will be then able to download all the data related to your environment. And when I say all the data, it will be all the token and the work item. This without limit. So, explaining this two kind of a feature, uh, in particular the last one, you can see something. Or we give you the right to create dashboard in a limited quantity of data, or we give you the right to export all the database, and after you will need this database to uh, configure your own BI tool. So, each both case, you have a good point and bad point. For example, in the dashboard, you have a limited quantity of data. And for the export of data, you need to use your own BI tool. So that's why we created our own analytics report that will be able to take a huge quantity of data. And in the same time, you don't need to configure uh, a BI tool to be able to uh, analyze this data. This analytics report are divided in three categories. Three categories because each of this category will reach a different objective. For the first one, chronometry and volume, as the name is indicated, we will analyze the quantity of work item inside of your environment, and in particular, the time execution of this different work item. This time execution will be in different level, it can be in the work item itself, but also in the task, which will be give you the possibility to analyze and see where are the tasks that are responsible, responsible sorry, for bottlenecks inside of your processes? The second category is about teams. This time, we will focus the point of view of the report in the point of view of the users who are responsible of the different tasks inside your work item. And the last one will be the requester. So who are the people and the person who are, uh, who are the source of your work item? What is the origin of your work intensity? So before that I explain the goal and more details uh, about the different uh, reports, let's do a quick tour about the structure of uh, a report in particular. So. I will show you in this moment of the presentation um, the different elements that composed a, a report in Airflow. Generally, our reports are composed of three parts. The first one in the top is the setup part. It's here that you will do your, the configuration of your report to limit the display of a quantity of data. The second part is a chart we will display a top 20 of the data that you configure above in the configuration part. This chart will display all the time, and this depends on the report where you are, a key indicator that will reflect the goal of this one. 
The third part is a table that I will explain just after. And this table is composed of the key indicator each time. But moreover, it will explain different other indicators to make you possible to analyze deeply the data. So now let's come back to the first part, which is the configuration of the report. How can you configure a report in Airflow? Generally, for most of the reports, you will have to set up two things. The left part that we call segmentation and the right part that we call uh, the period. In the segmentation, you will make a restriction of the data on two points, processes and or the users. And in the periodic part, we will do restriction about time. For the segmentation part, as you can see, you have the possibility to create accumulation of different segmentation. This accumulation, depending where for which report you are, it will create several or just mixing the data inside of a chart. For example, here, it's putting the different segmentation together inside of the same chart. But for the report, for example, we will see later, it will create a chart for different segmentation. And the system gives you the possibility to uh, display until four segmentation for the different reports. So how can you add segmentation in your analyze? You just need to click on the plus icon. And here you will reach all the segmentation available in your environment. If you want to create one to restrict a particular amount of data, you just need to click in the new button. From that moment, you will need to give a name to this segmentation, a description, and in this far first tab, you will create the restriction of the data. And as I said before, you have the possibility to do a restriction by process, so it will be in this part, or by users. So for the moment, let me create a, a segmentation for the example. I will call it sale plus final. So here, my goal will be to create a segmentation that will show only the processes uh, of the sales processes and the finance one. So I will create a restriction for this. And for this, I can select the list of the processes. And if your environment has a huge amount of uh, processes and data, which is not the case of my example, we give you the possibility to, to select uh, all the processes of one category of process. If you need to, mo to know more information about the feature, the category feature, you can reach our knowledge base for this. So in my example, I will select two process of finance and two of sales. And from that moment, you can see the number of the restriction that you put here. And you will be able to see this in the selected tab. You can choose also a color. This color will be available after in the, in the segmentation. This could be important, for example, for the chart part. And here you have an information interesting, which is public or private. That means that if I select public, I will be able to share this segmentation that I created for all the user of my environment who has access to this feature. If I let in private, private, sorry, only me will be able to see this segmentation that I just created. I will let in public. I will show you after during this presentation how you can activate or not this uh, right for your different user. What I mean is, I will show you how you can give the access of the analytics, for sure. But I will show you also how you can let the possibility for user to share and publish uh, the segmentation that he created. I will confirm. As you can see, once you create a segmentation, it autom automatically display it in the page. And so, the chart is adapted 
including this data inside of the chart and the table also. As you can see here, the table is divided in three parts. Let me just close the element. You have all the element, all the segmentation, finally will create a tab inside of the tab displaying the data. Just let me put back my normal display. If you want to take it off a segmentation of your analyze, just need to click here and click on unbite. From that moment, the page, the report page will adapt and show only the segmentation you want to display. The other part that is important to set up to configure your report is the period. Here, the period can be defined in two things. Or you choose a custom period and you will choose the beginning date and the end date. Or you can choose predefined period like last month, for example, last week. And so from that moment, this date doesn't uh, need it to be filled in. Another thing that uh, is important in the period is this selection. Started on and finished on. <clears throat> Sorry. Depending on the report you are, and this notion is really important for your understanding, depending on the report you are, the started on and finished on option will take in consideration different level of the process execution. For example, here we are in the process lead time. And in the process lead time, we do the analyze of the execution time of your processes. So for this reason, we are analyzing here, the started on and finished on, the work item level. And in particular, the work item level for work items which are completed, okay? So if I do an example here, and I will choose, uh, First August until the 31st of August. Here, my restriction, my temporal restriction will be of work items uh, which are completed, but who start from the 1st of, Oct uh, of August until the 31st of August. And if I choose finished on, it will show the work item that can be started before the 1st of August, but have been completed between the 1st and the 31st. And as we know that this kind of information can be a little bit confusing, and this kind of information is really important for you to, to be aware, to be able to analyze correctly the data, we put this icon here, an information icon that gives you the possibility to understand few elements of each report. The first one will be the, the fact uh, you will be able to understand the goal of each uh, report and moreover you will be able to, to understand the periodic filter. Sorry, I just get out. The periodic filter. For example here it specified that the periodic filter considers completed work items and it specified also that you have the possibility to do comparison period. This comparison period, and I will show you an example after, will give you the possibility to see the evolution of the key indicator of each report between two periods. Well, once you set up your segmentation and your period, and in particular the segmentation, maybe you will need to save configuration of the segmentation. For example, here you see that I had six or seven segmentations, so it's not a huge amount uh, of data. But in your different environments and system, maybe you will have hundreds of segmentation different. And so you can imagine the, the how many combination uh, you, you can have to analyze correctly the data the way you want. So for this, we give you the possibility to save what we call a layout. And this layout will be visible here with the title of the report. To see the different layout uh, available in your environment, you need to click here. From that moment, you will see the different layout existing. 
and for example if you click in a one and you click apply directly the system will display the correct segmentation if you need to save uh, this layout because you will change for example you will add a, a new segmentation for example you cancel one you can save here and if you need to edit it like to change the, the title or save as new for example or archive it you can use this pencil icon here you can see something interesting here also you have the possibility to let it public or private so we will see after how you can share also a layout and how you can let <coughs> the user of your environment to share or not different layout of the repo. <coughs> now let's talk about the chart that we finished to set the configuration of our report. We know how to do it. And so now we can talk about the chart. The chart will all the time display for many of our reports, a restriction of top 20 of the different data that you will set up here and here. It's for a performance reason and also to give you the possibility to analyze quickly the data thanks to a chart. Each time it will use a key indicator that I will explain better uh, when I will talk about the goal of each report. And if you want to have more details, you can see under the table associated to this chart. And at the difference with the chart, table will not display a top 20. It will display all the data corresponding to the segmentation. So more than the key indicator that you will see corresponding to the chart, you will have other indicator and also more data to be able to analyze. This table, you can download it and we bring a specifically a feature for this table in Airflow. We have the possibility, if you click here, to switch with a pivot grid, which gives you the possibility to manipulate the different information to make it possible to create an angle of point of view for you to analyze correctly the data. You will have the possibility, for example, here to add different property and change the order of the table for you to be able to see the data in the way you want. You have also the possibility to export an Excel data. I will show you an example of kind of uh, element that we can play, you know, for you to be able to analyze correctly uh, the data. Well, I think I finished to talk about the, the the structure of a report. Now I think it's interesting for you to know how you can give the right for your user to analyze and see this report. As you know, Airflow natively gives three role, three user role uh, in your environment. These role are administrator, portal only, and users. By default, only the administrator users can see this icon in the menu and so access the analytics. The users and portal only can't. But you have the possibility to create custom roles and give the access of this feature. For this, you create the role here. And to give access to the analytics feature, you need to go here and select processes. And from that moment here, at this part, you will see a new column that we didn't have uh, until now, which is analytics. From that moment, you can select all the processes of your environment or selection of the processes, and it will give the right for the user associated to this role to see uh, the reports. First information, even if you choose all the process or selection of the process, once you select here, it will give the possibility to the concerned user to see all the reports. You give all the reports or no reports. And if you choose all the processes, for sure it will give all the reports for all the data possible of your environment airflow. And if you choose, sorry, 
uh, two processes, for example, here, it will limit it the quantity of data displayed in the different reports. So, for example, here, accounts payable and accounts receivable. If I ch uh, select this option, so the system will display inside of the chart and the table only the data concerning these processes. So before, if you pay attention about my segmentation, you saw that there were a segmentation of all data, which is um, native uh, segmentation of the system. That means in this configuration that the user will be able to see the segmentation all data, but with a restriction on these two processes. And um, a little bit before, I explained the concept of the publish uh, publication of layout and segmentation, which is you can co uh, share this kind of information with other user inside your environment. To let the possibility for a user to do that, you have to select this option. If you don't select this option, the user will be able to create a segmentation, to create a layout, but just for himself. Uh, just to complete my explanation, the administrator have for sure this option activated. Now, let's go back to our home page and let's uh, focus a little bit more inside of the different reports. Let's start with the chronometry and volume, which I think I will spend more time than the other one. The process lead time, which was the, the one that I used to explain a little bit more the structure of the different reports, has an objective about time. The goal is to understand the average working process execution time of your different process, and in particular, the different version of your processes. So, depending on the segmentation that you will choose here in the time, it will display the top 20 in the chart of the process version that take the most time to be executed. The goal, uh, and we are working on the evolution on, uh, for this, is to take in consideration the calendar which is associated to the process version. That means that, for example, in this calendar, you don't work the Saturday and the Sunday, for example, we will not count the time of the Saturday and the Sunday. If you need to have more information about calendar, I suggest you to see our course about the deadlines and how to set deadlines for your process and your task. Following this uh, chart, you will see the main information about the time execution of your process version in a table. In this table, you will be able to see inside of each segmentation, the process concerned, the version, if you put the process on or you will have this information, and the number of work item completed of this process version. And here, the average working time. I just I precise here that it's fake data because it's a, I'm using an environment of test and presentation. But the goal here is to display the data and the time execution of the different work items. It's an average of the time execution of the number of process. And we did the, what can I say, <clears throat> the split by version to show you the difference in, of the version to make you possible to analyze if the upgrade of your version bring you more efficiency or not. And for example, here it's ordering by uh, process. If I want to order, yeah, by version, I will order by process. Like that, you can see directly <clears throat> the difference uh, with the process. And if you want to have more details, it's for you the moment to switch with the dynamic view. For example, here, you can have the split by version because uh, it's automatically done like that. But if you want to, for example, see the work item, you just need to go here in the property and find this information if it's uh, available. So for example, here right now, uh -huh, this is not available for this uh, report. But for some of them, you will have the possibility, <coughs> sorry, to add 
the number of the work item that you will be able to put here. And from that, when you will click here, you will have the information of the number of the work item concerned. And you will be able even to go deeper by showing the tasks. So uh, more than the, of the number of the work item, you will see the task and the time execution of each task. Now let's switch for another one, the backlog. In the backlog, we will stop to talk about time execution, to talk about quantity. Here, depending on the time that you will display here and the segmentation, it will create a graph, a chart, for each segmentation that you created. And here the goal is in a X axis to see by time the number of created work item and finished work item. And like that, thanks to this information, in the time you will be able to see an evolution of uh, the intensity of your work that you have in your teams, for example. Depending on the quantity of days that you put here in the, in the periodic filter, it will display um, um, scale different in the chart. For example, as I put uh, a month, full month, it's displaying uh, data for each uh, week. But for example, if I restrict my uh, analysis for maybe, let's say, seven days, I will have another point of view. You know, depending of the quantity of data you want to check in this report, the X axis will adapt. Like that, you can see the evolution of the, the, the work item open inside of your, your uh, environment and inside of your segmentation. The goal here is to see the, 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 the backlog chart, with, which is the, the, the quantity of work item still open inside of your environment. Like that, you can see if your intensity of work is in a way that increasing, and so maybe you need to reforce your team or decreasing. And all that information that you can see here will be visible in the table just under, with each time the a line by period studied and represented in the X axis, with the number of created work item, finished work item, and the accumulation, which is the number of work items still open in the selected period. Let's switch for another report, the bottlenecks. I think it's one of the reports that you will use the most. The goal of this report is to show the tasks that are the most responsible of bottlenecks inside your different processes. So for this, we are using an indicator that we created in Airflow, which called the weighted average. This indicator is a percentage that more this percentage is big, and it explains that uh, more the tasks uh, associated with this percentage take time to be executed, and so is responsible for bottlenecks. You have more information in this table where you can see the name of the task associated with the process and its version. You can see the average working time. So same thing than the process lead time. We will work to bring uh, this time associated to the calendar and the number. So the weighted average is a calculation mixing these two information, the count and the average working time. Thanks to this uh, formula that we will precise here in the information and in the documentation available in our knowledge base, we create this indicator. And as I said before, more this indicator is bigger and more it means that these tasks take time to be executed and slow down your process execution. And to have a vision, a little bit more visual of this kind of information and indicator, we create this visualization where you can see directly this information on your diagram of the process. How you can see and analyze this information. 
Here you are different kind of colors. More it's red, and more that means that the indicator here, the weighted average, is bigger. And so more this task is responsible for bottlenecks. The next report is the heat maps. And in fact, the heat maps is just the feature I just show you. The only difference here that you will choose um, the, the periodic filter, the process, and its version. And after, it will display exactly what I said before, a diagram with color that shows the tasks which are more responsible for bottlenecks. To conclude with the chronometry and volume, you have the possibility to see a decision cube. A decision cube, finally, it's a pivot grid with uh, the possibility to display a graph, a chart, or not. And at the difference with the previous uh, report that gives also a pivot grid, here you don't need to select any segmentation. It will be directly done, this analysis, on all work items that you have the right to see with your user profile in your environment. The only thing with what you can play, if I can say like that, is the periodic filter. And if you already check the analytics report, uh, you can see that you have a decision cube for chronometer and volume, one for teams, and one for requester. So why do we give the possibility to have three decision cubes? Because in fact, we display the same information because we don't have the segmentation here. It will display all the data existing in your environment. Yes, for sure. But we created three because we will analyze three levels of information. Let me explain better. In the chronometry and volume, we'll be in the level with the most details, which means the task level. For example, let's imagine that my uh, environment is composed of only one work item. Okay, This work item is composed of five tasks. It's a simple process. Task one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So my table here, it will display the value number five because in this one, we are counting the task execution, which will be different with the decision cube on the teams. Because on the teams, we will be in the level of the token. So you remember in the beginning of this presentation, I was talking about the token and work item notion. So here it's really important for you to have the difference in mind. What is the difference between a work item and a token? Let's take back the example of my, my process. He has five tasks straight away. Here, it's easy. A token is the same thing of a work item. Okay. But now let's take an example a little bit more complicated. After my ta first task, I have a parallel gateway that will split my process in two different paths. From that moment, my token will be divided into two sub-tokens. So this table here, it will display the value three because I have one main token and two top token. Users that uh, are used to work with this kind of parallel gateway knows what I mean because in the task list, for example, you have this distinction. Moreover, the, the user that used the exportation of our database can understand these two because we have two files. We have one file in the level of the work item and we have a file in the level of the token. And for the requester, the decision cube, we will be in the level of the work item. So if I take back my, exam my previous uh, example about uh, the three token, one main and two uh, sub token, in uh, this decision cube, we will display the value one because it's one work item. Once again, I know that it's a lot of information during this presentation, so we will put more information all the time uh, here in this information icon.
Now let's talk about the teams and the requester. And I will maybe go a little bit uh, quickly about uh, these uh, different categories. In the teams, as I said before, the objective is to analyze uh, the quantity of uh, work item or the time execution, but this time in the point of view of the users of your team that are responsible for the execution of tasks and work item. So here you choose your segmentation and the difference will be that in the X axis we will display the different user of your environment. And here it will display the top 20 of the users in the segmentation you choose and at the barrier you choose that add the most of task execution. This task execution are composed of two elements, the one that they receive and the one that they finish. So here you can see the quantity of the work item that they have to do in the period selected. And you can see the number they, are, they have to do and the number they did. Like that, you can see completely the intensity of work inside of a team. And for example, let's take uh, an example here. For example, in the finance, let's imagine that thanks to the segmentation you choose, all these people belong to the same department, okay, the same team, I would say. You can see that you have a problem of balance of quantity of work between Thomas Clark, for example, and Dorothy Garcia. So here, this kind of tool can help you to rearrange your processes to balance a little bit better the quantity of uh, repartition and balance of uh, work item for your team to be able to uh, bring better execution of your processes. All this information are available here. So you have the department of the user. So the department corresponds to the department record here. So if you need more information about this kind of information, I invite you to see our knowledge base for this. You see the team member, the number if you receive, number if you finished about the task. And here you have even an information about the deadline. If you set a deadline of the different on the different tasks, here you can see how many tasks are in the deadline and out of the deadline. And if this kind of information interests you for your analysis, then I suggest you to see the other report, which is deadlines. Here, it will be uh, exactly the same uh, kind of report. We, uh, we, we want to analyze and display the same uh, type of data, but this time only for tasks which have a deadline set. So you will have the, um, the same, uh, you can read, I mean, the, 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 the chart and the table the same way that we saw previously. That means that you will see the top 20 of the users that have the most tasks to execute inside of your processes, but this time only the tasks which have a deadline. And you see the same information in the table. And if you want to go even deeper in this kind of analysis, for example, to see, um, for example, the task who are with deadline out and which bring the work item late, the work item associated to this task, then you can see this last report of the team that will focus only about tasks who are with deadline out and the work item out. Like that, you can see where in the process, uh, for example, you have a process execution late and you want to know why it's late this kind of report can help you to understand the origin of the delay of your process execution and this by the team member. So once again here, the goal is to help you to understand if you need to rebalance the repartition of your team. Because sometimes, for sure, Dorothy Garcia that we saw a little bit before could be one of the person that have the most of task delay for sure because it was the user who was the most um, requested. So now let's go to the requester part. So we will change the point of view. We will not talk about the point of view of the user who are the executor 
of the process instances, but the user who are the requester. So here we will display the user, okay, that ask the most and create the most of work item. Like that, you can see and understand the source of your work in the city. And here you see the difference we do differently for this too. The difference between the ranking and the backlog, because they are really similar, is that in the ranking, we will see only information about work item completed. So here is to do an analysis about action that were already performed. And in the backlog, the reverse. We will see uh, in the same thing, I mean, by the point of view of the different requester, but this time for work item that are still open. So like that, you can see uh, the true and real intensity of work inside your environment. And this information are also uh, visible directly uh, in the table. Here also you have another information. You can see a burn chart, a backlog chart, finally, about the number and the evolution of the number of work items created uh, by this user. The last one is a focus about the, the quantity of creation uh, by requester, but this time with a focus on the deadlines. For example, here, if uh, you set up for your process a process deadline, you will be able to see the top 20 of the user requesters that have the most work item with deadline and with the distinction with the deadline in, in green, and out of the delay, out of the deadline, which means delay. And you have also this information in the table. So I guess that's all about the presentation of the different goals of our report. Before to conclude this presentation, I need to show you something else. You remember in the beginning of our presentation, I was talking about uh, custom pages and dashboards. We let the possibility of your different user who have the right to create dashboards to integrate this kind of report up here as a widget. So here you will choose the report and you will have to custom it. Like that, you have the possibility to give for some users uh, key indicators in personalized uh, dashboard pages. If you need more information on how to create a page in your workspace and create uh, indicators, I invite you to, to follow our course about dashboards. But here, it's really easy. You integrate, you choose your page, you click on the plus icon when you are in edit mode, and once you insert a, a report, you choose the report, you choose the segmentation. So here, if you remind good uh, this presentation, this segmentation, must be public. And after you, ch you, you choose uh, the data range, as it has to be a dashboard, that's why we have predefined a uh, data date. And after you choose uh, the statue, that will be uh, the point that will filter the period. Well, I will delete it just for my example. OK. To conclude this presentation, um, I need to tell you that this feature is available since last Monday. And as you can see, it's available in a beta version. What does it mean? The beta version means that all these reports will continue to uh, evaluate, if I can say like that. We will continue to improve. We will continue to fix some uh, some issues in different uh, in this different element, and also we will continue to improve the documentation that we will share with you. So during this time, until you see that it's beta, and I guess we have a goal of two or three months, you can use this feature to test it. And if you find error, or if you have idea of improvement, for example, or even question to use it. Uh, for the question, I suggest you to wait our documentation, uh, which will uh, come. But if you need to say that uh, to share with us uh, an error or to share with us an improvement suggestion, 
Then you can click on this icon and you can write an email that we will, our team will receive directly and you can even attach some screenshots to illustrate your case. Remember that the more you give us information, for example, for an error, and easier for us it is to fix this uh, quickly for you. I guess that's all for uh, this uh, presentation of this feature. For sure, if you need more information or if you are interested uh, by this feature, I invite you to contact uh, Rodrigo Gérez, who is our sales uh, director, and uh, for him to be able to arrange a meeting or another presentation. And otherwise, you can continue to contact us if you need uh, more information. I will come back to the, my tool of the webinar just to see if uh, we have a question. So guys, um, let me see. Okay. For the moment, we, we don't have question. So if you have, it's the moment uh, to, to, to write it. Uh, waiting uh, this, let me just conclude by the fact that you can contact us for more information and a documentation will be available soon uh, in English. The goal of this documentation will be to be split in two parts. One general, a little bit to explain the structure, you know, uh, how to configure a report, how to switch for a private grid mode, for example. And after we will try to create a documentation for each report to explain the goal and moreover to explain how the data are calculated. For example, in particular, when we provide you uh, different indicator um, that we created in Airflow. Because for you, it's important uh, to understand really what is behind uh, this indicator to be able to analyze correctly uh, this data. So guys, don't hesitate to contact us if you have any question. Also, this webinar normally is uh, recorded. So that means that if you reach back this link, you will be able to watch uh, again. I think it's for a period of uh, 15 days or something like that, uh, this presentation. So guys, um, I think I will conclude the webinar right now if uh, I don't have uh, any question. And I will wish you uh, a really good uh, day wherever you are in the world. Huh? I don't know if uh, it's the end of the day or the beginning. And uh, don't hesitate uh, to contact us. I wish you a really good day. Bye-bye.